understanding trauma bonds and what causes them, how they feel, how you can heal from them in, or start to heal from them. So let's start talking about trauma bonds. The most challenging part of leaving a narcissistic relationship is dealing with these trauma bonds. If it were easy to walk away, we wouldn't be sitting here talking. We wouldn't have to care about the stuff they do. We would just walk away, right? Trauma bonds hold you in place emotionally, almost physically. They they keep you wrapped up in the world of the narcissistic person, even when you want to walk away. So let's talk about what they are. All right. It is the like number one thing people struggle with, people reach out for help for, people don't understand and people feel like they're crazy about or crazy because of, right? So, all right. So there's an ongoing cycle in a narcissistic relationship or a relationship with a narcissist. And that is that they love bomb you and they devalue you. They love bomb you, they devalue you. It's back and forth. It is not planned. It is not, there's no rhythm to it. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It is inter intermittent. It is random. Okay. This random intermittent behavior, we call it intermittent reinforcement, but really it's intermittent both, right? Reinforcement and devaluing creates a confusion in your brain. It makes your brain seek the positive. It, it's, it basically creates scarcity so that you are constantly seeking the good stuff. That over time, this sort of reward and punishment world that you live in creates powerful emotional resistance or an emotional bond resistant to change. So you become used to this cycle. You become that becomes your your world and your normal. And so we'll talk about what happens. Um, so basically, it cre creates like an addictive pattern in your brain it creates actual brain chemistry changes in your in your own brain to cause the need for the feeling of validation and it conditions you to believe that the toxic cycle that you're living in is totally normal when you have had this since childhood this intermittent reinforcement, this love bomb devalue, the pedestal they put you on, the knocking off of that pedestal, whatever it is that you've experienced of this, this type of thing, you think it is normal. You think that's what life is. You think that's what relationships are. But what you're not seeing, because it's all going on inside the brain, is the chemical things that happen within the brain. So what happens is when there is love bombing, and especially because it comes from being knocked down so far, it feels so good to be elevated and lifted back up with the love bombing after the devaluing that you have are flooded with oxytocin. Oxytocin creates bonds. It just does. You can pet a puppy and you're bonded to that puppy from the oxytocin that flows in your brain from the touch and the cuteness and the smells and the and the, the cuteness of the puppy, right? You can hug a friend and you feel close to that friend without words from the oxytocin that flows in your body from the experience of touch, okay? So especially when there is any intimacy in a relationship, you're flooded with oxytocin. Okay, so there's bonds. Right there, you're bonded. There is something in your brain called androgynous opioids. I am not going to go into a lot of detail. I am not a scientist. I am going, I can research it and give you a whole lot more information, but for right now, okay, androgynous opioids, it's the pleasure, pain, withdrawal, and um, dependence cycle. So when you are, when these androgynous opioids have nowhere to, to when they're not met with uh, a fulfillment, in the brain, it creates the, the drive, a painful feeling, which creates the feeling of withdrawal. What happens is when we have contact again, say you're no contact and you're trauma bonded and you're having this feeling of withdrawal, these androgynous opi opioids are just, you know, in the brain with no, no receptor because there's no completion of the task, which is find the thing that's causing this feeling of pain 
and get in contact with it so the pain goes away. It, it That's the addiction cycle. That's the brain's addiction cycle. And it creates dependence upon the thing, which is the narcissist, okay? So you can see why we have to break it. We have to go no contact. We have to go limited and very low contact. We have to break the dynamic of how we relate to them if we are low contact so that it becomes businesslike because otherwise this keeps going. It keeps this pattern keeps going. Another thing that happens in your body is your cortisol rises. When you are under stress of any kind, your cortisol rises. When your cortisol rises, it messes with the serotonin levels in your brain. It messes with your metabolism. It messes with your immune system. It, it messes with a lot of stuff. It's not healthy to have very high levels of cortisol for extended periods of time. It's there to get you out of situations. Cortisol gives you a rush to fix, to retreat, to fight. It, it, it helps you, you know, survive in traumatic situations or in scary situations. But to live that way for prolonged periods of time, it's messing with your mind. It's messing with your feelings of well-being and it's causing metabolic and, and physical issues with your body. It's, it's a difficult thing. And that's why, you know, we'll, we'll talk about ways to help after. So another thing that happens is the dopamine cycle. Your body creates dopamine, more and more dopamine when it's seeking something. We're going to give an analogy of gambling because it's an easy one to see. When someone is addicted to gambling, even when you're not addicted, when you enjoy gambling, okay, you let's just say um, it doesn't matter what you're playing, you're gambling and you keep losing, but you keep playing and you keep losing, but you keep playing. And every time you lose, you have the feeling of, I want more. I want more because I'm going to win. I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it. So it's making you seek, making you seek, making you seek. And then you could win half of what you played. And you would be ecstatic because that dopamine is already at such a high level in your body and then it's met with a win. So basically, when you're with a narcissist and they devalue you, your dopamine rises as it's trying to seek the thing that it knows is there, which is the love bombing or the breadcrumbing or whatever it is they give you. So if you are um, androgynous, E with an E, um, if you are seeking, 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 wanting, wanting, wanting from the narcissist, your dopamine keeps rising, rising for that thing. Does that make sense? You can redirect that towards something else and have your dopamine directed towards something more positive in your life. And that is one way to heal that. To break the trauma bonds is to refocus, right? That's why refocusing is so important because this is going to go on because of all the other stuff going on. Okay. They, um, all, a lot of this, let's see what else do I have here. It um, basically when you are, okay, you also have elevated levels of adrenaline. We know that because we feel it. <laughs> Adrenaline's an easy one. It's the rush. It's the rage. It's the anger. It's the hurt. It's the hysteria. It's the, it's all of that, that feel that rush of feeling that you can't control because your blood's pumping your heart's beating hard, you know, you're shaking, all of that stuff that happens. Um, okay, those are just a few of the things that happen. There's a lot more that goes on, but those are just a few of the things that happens with the brain and with the body when you're trauma bonded. So let's move on a bit and try to understand that all of this, all of this that's going on, plus the emotional side of it, which is, am I right or am I wrong? oh my gosh, I thought I was right and justified in being upset, but now I feel like I'm guilty and I'm the one that's in, I'm the one that's bad. It's my fault. All of that, you got cognitive dissonance that, come, that comes on board and you, cognitive dissonance is a reaction to distress that creates two opposing beliefs in your brain, right? Um, and your brain is trying to comprehend um, all of it is trying to comp comprehend the duplicity that the two things going on that are completely different. So I have a video on cognitive dissonance just from a couple like last week. So that might help to go back and visit that if you need it. The narcissist, when you're trauma bonded, becomes the essential part of your life. They become everything. You are, you're attached to a narcissist through the cycle of love bombing and devaluing. It feels like love. 
If you have never known anything different because you were raised this way, it is love for you, okay? But it is not healthy for you. It isn't healthy attachment. It is usually an anx anxious attachment that is created from the fact that this person could abandon you at any second, that they could lie to you, that they could cheat, that they could do all these horrible things to you, and you're hanging on with, for dear life just to have a piece of what you have been seeking, which is love and validation from this person. This cycle also, the love bomb and D value cycle, it also fuels the narcissist need for ego validation and conditions you to believe that these toxic behaviors are normal. So many people talk to me when they're trauma bonded and in their minds know that this isn't right, but in their beliefs, in their hearts, in the, in the, in the, like the core of them can't see that this isn't normal. Does that ring a bell for anyone? <laughs> because this is like, this is the reason that this type of manipulation that narcissists do is so detrimental to people. It's one thing to have people name call and gaslight, confuse, be super annoying, be super toxic. And it's another thing to be addicted to it, right? It's another thing to not be able to get away from it. I am Lise Colucci, one of the life coaches over at queenbeing.com. If you like this channel, hit subscribe, hit the thumbs up. If you need anything related to coaching or group coaching, check out the main description of every video. I can be reached there. I'm here to help you if you need it. I will see you guys next time. You have a fantastic day and take care. Bye-bye.